So about a month ago, I made a video using Unity where I created a scene and we used our virtual reality hands and we looked for some inputs from the controllers to drive the animations of our hands. And now at the time I said that if I found a better way of doing it, that I'd let you guys know. Well, good news is I have. We can have, in fact make our code half the length it currently is. Let's take a look. So just as a little bit of background here from the last video, I definitely recommend checking that out because it gives you um, an overview of what we've done here, where we're starting from. But just as a, a quick recap, we got XR set up, we've gone to our package manager, and we've brought in the XR interaction toolkit just here, and we also brought in the default input actions, um, those samples, and then in the project settings, We've also enabled the XR plugin management and enabled Oculus. So that got started there. And then in our main scene, our rig here that we're using is actually the action based uh, room scale XR rig. Uh, and as you can see, we went through the process of actually assigning all of the correct uh, actions to things like our controllers um, using those samples that we imported from the package manager. And then in the previous video, we then wrote that long script to listen for um, button presses on the controllers, uh, which would then animate the hands. And the VR hands were available as a package that you could import into your project, all ready to go with the animations. All we needed to do was hook up a couple of variables. But for those of you that watched that previous video, that script was very, very long. And we'll take a quick look at that script now. So here's the script that we wrote in our previous lesson. And as you can see, it's quite lengthy. Just to get the grip animating and the, and the, the, and the pinch of the hands. It's actually almost 50 lines of code, which seemed ridiculous at the time. Because what we were doing, we were reading in, we were taking in some inputs in our code. So if, let's just sh show you the prefab. So our hand controller was, we had to type, we had to assign the action asset. And then I was, we were looking for the controller name uh, and then the action name for the activate and select. So we were actually having to manually type these, which isn't great especially if someone comes along in our input actions and changes those. If you're working in a team, then it completely break our hand interactions. So I wanted to make it so we just dropped in the action that we we're actually using, um, which would then make it more efficient. Because also in our code, we're using the update function to read a couple of values, uh, even when we're not pressing the buttons, which, you know, when it's just two, two buttons, when we're just reading in a couple of floats, it isn't too much of an overhead, but I'd like it to be way more efficient. So I found a way, let's have a look. So let's make a new scene. I'm gonna go file, new scene, and we're not gonna save anything there. Now I'm just gonna add a couple of um, things into my scene. I'm gonna add my level up plane. Can't be a good bit of branding. And we're gonna remove the main camera, let's delete that. And my directional light, that's fine for a minute. And then we're gonna create an XR rig. And we're gonna go and create a room scale XR rig, which is action based. And it's going to drop it into our scene. I'm just going to reset it back to zero. So it's in the good place. And make sure my tracking origin mode is the floor. And I'm going to open up my um, XR rig and just double check that all the um, all the corresponding actions are assigned. And you can see they're all assigned there by default, like we set up in our previous tutorial. Uh, I don't have my model prefabs in there for my hands at the moment. So I'm going to go to my VR hands package. And I'm going to select my prefab. On my left hand, I'm going to put my left hand model in there. I'm going to do the same for the right hand model. Like so. And you can see here we've got our old script for our hand controller. We don't want that working at the moment, so we're going to go ahead and turn that off. So now we're going to go ahead and write our new script. So let's go and click on our scripts folder. I'm going to create a new folder here called awesome new script let's keep these separate a little bit and i'm going to right click and go create c sharp script improved and controller so in the prefabs folder on my left hand model i'm going to add a component which is going to be our improved hand controller and then i'm going to do the same for the right hand model Take the old script off. I don't want that garbage anymore. Okay, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and double click the script and we're going to open up in Visual Studio. First thing we're going to want to do is going to make the screen a bit bigger for you. Let's go to 150%. 
So we don't need the two using statements, the namespaces at the top. We're just going to import the Unity Engine namespace <coughs> when we get squeaky there. Uh, and then we are going to need, use the input system. So we're going to need to bring in that. So using Unity Engine dot input system. We're not going to use our start or update function. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. We are going to need two variables and they are going to be of the type input action reference. Now, we don't want other classes to be able to access these two variables, so they can be private, but we are going to need to be able to see them in the inspector. So we'll make them serialize field and we'll put input action reference. This is going to reference, as you guessed it, an input action. And this is going to be for the controller action grip. And we want another one for the trigger, so serialize field. Input action reference. Oh, small. Controller action trigger. Don't forget the camel case there. Let's put it on an A. And semicolon. So those are the only two variables we're going to need, as opposed to the five or six we had before. We are going to need to get a link to our hand animator. So we will need a private animator. And animator. I'm going to put my semicolon there. That's the same as before. So we're going to initialize everything in the awake function. So we're going to use awake, we're going to avoid awake. So in our awake function, we are now going to allocate the performed event of our controller actions to a function. And this will make more sense when we type it out. So we're going to go ahead and type controller action grip and then commit dot. And then we want the action and then we want to say performed. So this is an event that's performed when we press the grip button and we're going to assign it to a method called grip. This is a method called a big G grip press. Finish it off with a semicolon. Now it's going to go red here because it doesn't know that we haven't made this method yet. So it's a shortcut. We can press control uh, and then full stop and generate method at the top of the list. And it's going to put that grip press method in for us. And we can go ahead and remove the exception. We're also going to need to allocate a method for the trigger press. So we're going to say control action trigger. So this here is reference is this variable at the top, this input action reference. So when this action is performed, when we're pressing the trigger, it's going to fire off the trigger press method. And again, this doesn't exist, so we can press control and full stop and create that function down below. And we can take out that. We're also going to need to get hold of our animator. So we can say hand animator equals get component animator. And believe it or not, we're almost done. And then inside our trigger press, we are now going to set the value for our hand animator. Because now this is only going to fire off when we're actually pressing the trigger. So we can say hand animator, we want to set the float for trigger. And then the value that we're going to pass it is the value of the button press, which is being passed to us through this object. So we can say object dot read value float and then finish it off with a couple of brackets and then a semicolon and that is literally all we need and we're going to copy this and put it in our grip so let's copy that paste that inside there and change this to grip i remember from the other tutorial these strings here correspond back to our animator which is going to control the blend tree but that doesn't stop there. We can actually make this even less. So we can turn these two methods into expression bodies. And to do that, we're going to put equals and then the greater than sign and copy this entire line, paste it next to that little greater than sign, and then we can remove all of that. That might be a little, not a lot. You might not like long lines like that. You might find it easier to read. 
and when it's all broken down like that and that's okay this is just my personal preference I'm gonna do the same here let's copy that paste that there and we don't need the using statement that's popped in for some reason so this is all we need to actually get our hands working and compared to this one it's way better uh, we're no longer looking for values every frame it's only going to be allocated when we're actually pressing the buttons and there is a little bit more we need to do in unity to set this up so let's jump back to unity and take a look so back on our hand prefabs let's go ahead and select one so now we have uh the variables that we put in there for our input action reference are now visible to us in the inspector <clears throat> and we're looking for the input action reference for the grip and the trigger I'm going to do this for the right and the left hand. So on the right hand, for the controller action grip, we click on the little circle and we're going to be looking for the select, which is the XRI right hand select. Go ahead and click on that one and pop it in. And close that. And then we want to do the same for the trigger, which is going to be the activate. So we click on the circle, go to XRI right hand and we'll look for activate. There it is, just there, double click. And it's assigned it now for our right hand model. We'll jump into our left hand model and do exactly the same controller action grip we want the left hand select and the left hand activate so now these these actions correspond back to our input actions which we imported you can see on the left hand we've got the select and the activate which is currently um, set to a button and we need to go to our XR rig or our XR interaction manager actually even one will do Probably the interaction manager makes more sense uh, and then we can go ahead if we were going to add a component to this and it's going to be the input action manager we're going to need to assign an action asset to this on the input action manager so let's go ahead and we'll assign our xri default input actions without this um, nothing will work this will go through all our input actions and enable and, and disable them accordingly so make sure we've got that input action manager on there here we go, so we have our hands, they're orientated the wrong way, but that's not a problem, that's very easy to fix. But now you can see, we can press our buttons, and they're going to pinch, and, and do all the business, which is great. Um, but, there is one problem with our hands, and that is, at the moment, they're only taking in a value that goes between 0 and 1. Now if you watch, I'll just do that again, if you watch my left hand here, I'm going to press my grip, and it goes on off on off there's no like slow movement of it down which is what we're really looking for let's take a look at how we can tweak our input action assets to pass our scripts the values that it needs so our scripts already set up to receive a float value but currently we're only passing it zero or one kind of like a true or false kind of thing because it's a button so we need to tweak that so i'm going to use just on my xr control i've just got my right hand controller selected i'm just going to click on one of these references it's just going to bring up um, where my default input actions are located and I'm going to open up my XRI default input actions which is contained within assets samples XR interaction toolkit uh, the version number and then default input actions so let's open up this and we're going to tweak a couple of things to pass the correct values across to animate our hands properly so let's have a look at what we've got at the moment we we'll click on our XRI left hand action map and then select our select which is going to be our grip so when we're making a fist at the moment it's trying to passing it it's just a button we're going to change it to value and then under control type we're going to change it to axis now i'm not great with a new input manager um so there might be a better way of passing the value across but this is what's worked for me and then we're going to extend it down and you might have something different here to me but you can actually go ahead and just kind of delete these i only generally we can only have one but you can put in as many as you want um, on my grip pressed you don't worry if you've got something different I'm going to change its path so instead of grip pressed we're going to go to xrr xr controller and the xr controller left hand optional controls and then we want to find our grip is that one there so now we've got an action type of value control type of axis and um, we're passing we change this just to the grip with generic xr controller ticked so save that let's have a quick test so here's our hand uh, the red is just our xr ray tractor so before it was just snapping straight to our grip close position when we press the grip 
Now I'm just going to gently squeeze the grip and you can see there that my hand is slowly closing which is what we wanted rather than just this instant close it's now reading in a value properly and you can see I need to set my um, properties for the uh, activate. But that's much better that's exactly what we wanted to do. So if that working we now need to look at the activate so I've dropped down from select to activate I'm going to change this to a value and an axis just like before instead of the trigger pressed I'm going to change our path I'm going to go to other let's go back no don't go to other go to XR controller XR controller for the left hand optional controls and then we want trigger and then that should be the left hand complete let's save it and I will move ahead and do the same for the right hand so go to our activate give it a value make it an axis instead of the trigger press we'll change it from trigger press to trigger it's got to find it on the list there it is near the top trigger left hand XR XR controller it's in the right hand ah that nearly caught us out back again XR controller right hand optional controls trigger and then just confirm you've got um the right path for the right hand so we've got right hand here and we've got the trigger right hand XR controller I think I've already done the select but again if you have if you've got it on button change it to value put it on axis and then drop it down and then instead of grip pressed change it to grip that would be um, clicking on there and going to the path and then signing the grip and then save that's that is now all of our buttons changed to you to pass a float value across to our script which then our script will allocate Co the corresponding value to our animator so before we go ahead and test what we've just done I'm going to fix our hand rotation so they're around the right way so I'm going to create an empty object in our left hand controller and we're going to call this left hand rotation offset and make sure it's all at zero 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 I'm going to duplicate that drag it into my right hand controller and name this one right hand controller offset and for the right hand we're going to go minus 90 on the z and for our left hand i think it'd be 90. and what that's going to do is beforehand where my i was holding my hands like this in the real world my vr hands were like this and um, so we've just we've just made two transforms which are then going to snap our hands back around the right way uh, and we do that by going to our left controller where we have our XR controller script and dragging in that transform. So drag the left hand rotation offset into the model transform and do the same for the right hand, drag the right hand rotation offset in like that. Now let's press play and see what we have. So our hands ran the right way, which is a great start. Uh, and now let's press our buttons. Oh yeah, that's much, much better. So now we're passing in that float value that's going to allow us to do a slow blend for a like, grip press instead of an instant snap, which seems and feels much more realistic. So we've got a pinch there, gradual pinch, gradual fist, and that was working on both hands as well. So this is way more efficient because beforehand our script was like 50 plus lines and you had to enter a load of strings that had to go and then find the corresponding action asset. And now all we're going to do, all we have to do is just drag and drop in um, the input action reference for our grip and trigger, uh, and it's not now it's no longer looking for values for our grip and our trigger press every single frame on both hands. It's only doing it when we're pressing these buttons, which is way more efficient. So I really hope you found that video useful. Again, apologies for having to update it, but I did want to do uh, an up-to-date method. I did say that if I found a better way of doing it. That I'd show you guys and I think in the long run it saved way more time because we haven't got that really long script that we have to do and generate as we did beforehand it's actually just a few lines of code and we can get our hands up and running really quickly with some nice animations um, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and if it helped you out at all it'd be really good to know and again your subscription is always appreciated and I'm going to actually put this project up on my Patreon page so if you're interested you can grab it from there thanks very much